Much of our wildlife lives in some pretty remote locations and can be a real challenge to encounter. But thanks to the development of open sanctuaries and nature reserves, where pests have been entirely eradicated, everyone has an opportunity to enjoy these species at their best, behaving naturally in their natural habitat. I'm here today to meet with John Barrett to see how he shares the treasures of Kapiti with visitors. So John, I'm pretty excited at the possibility of catching a glimpse of a little spotted kiwi. What can you tell me about those birds? Most people who are accustomed to seeing brown kiwi will notice straight away that our little bloke is much smaller, yeah. smallest of the kiwi family. Uh, the colouring is uh, much lighter. So do little spots and brown kiwi have different calls? They do. They do. The, the, uh, the, male, <coughs> the male call is a much higher pitch and um, the female is a lower pitch, but they, they have a different, different voice to the brown or the tokaweka. So can you tell me a little bit about the history of little spotted kiwi on Kapiti Island? Well, I can give you a little history as far as we know it, and it's um, you know there, there was a little bit of uh, a grey area around how little spots got here, but one of the stories uh, is that um, a pair was given to my great grandfather in the uh, late 1890s. We're not sure where that gift might have come from. So, of all the birds that are here today, have they all come from that initial pair? Or have they come they from have. elsewhere? No, they've bred up from that initial population. So, when people see their first kiwi, what sort of reactions do you see? The most common view of a kiwi here on Kapiti is a kiwi's bum disappearing into the bush. But when people do get a good view, and that's, that's pretty often, uh, they're just blown away. You know, New Zealanders particularly, who haven't seen a kiwi in the wild before, uh, they just get onto a real high that takes a lot of coming down off. Well, getting my first good look at a little spotted kiwi is certainly a big deal for me. What time do we, we head out, John? As soon as it's dark, as soon as the first kiwi start to call, uh, we'll be out um, trying to track them down. Fantastic. Mm. It's just gone 10 o'clock here and the kiwi have started calling. So I've got my warm weather gear on. I'm going to slip quietly into the bush and see if I can catch a glimpse of a little spotted kiwi. Here it is. Around here. Very quickly. Oh, it's a flipping weaker. Right in between my wings. It's a weaker. So we're deep in this beautiful moist bush now and I've just heard a male kiwi calling just over here. So I think it's time we turn the lights down and hopefully I'm going to be able to catch a glimpse of him if he comes snuffling this way. Observing kiwi in the wild is a really special experience. As a biologist, I'm always fascinated by their unique body shape and really unusual behaviour. And as a New Zealander, I really do feel a connection to them. And the great thing is, with nature reserves and open sanctuaries now dotted all over the country, this experience is there for everybody who's got the enthusiasm to get out there and spend a night or two in the bush.